Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Ben Jones here with Batdoor from Bronson Coffee Roasters. I'm hanging out in my coffee workshop again. It's Monday morning. Um, so I think we had the 23rd, 24th, today's like the 26th day of October. Coming up, uh, Halloween is this weekend. Um, we had our first really big uh, shift over to cold here in the Northwest. So um, my workshop is freezing, not literally freezing, but it is just incredibly cold out here. Uh, I need to make some coffee. Today I want to talk about uh, the Kalita Wave. A uh, video a while back we looked at the uh, Kalita Cantan drippers, those, those little paper things that can fold over your mug. Um, it was a fun little thing. But out in Atlanta, um, not in the Olympia market, but out in Atlanta, we do use the uh, Kalita Wave 185 drippers. Um, these are great. It's just a uh, classic mug top pour over. This one happens to have a flat bottom uh, geometry um, as opposed to the Bee House dripper that has that V or, sort of an, or what I call them as an elongated cone. Um, or then the V60, which is itself a V uh, all the way around, more like a Chemex shape. Um, there are people who get, um, I don't want to say fanatical, but I don't have any other word for it, who really endorse and stand by and are true believers in uh, the bed geometry. Yeah, they, it makes a difference. At the same time, you can get great cups of coffee out of all of them. Um, so Kalita Wave. This is uh, one of the early versions. Um, there's this little Mercedes-Benz looking uh, logo on the inside. That is a... Uh, thick gauge wire that was spot welded into the bottom to lift the paper filter off the off of the bottom so it doesn't choke out uh, and prevent draining through the three holes. The three hole design is classic to the um, to the Kalita Wave. In newer versions um, they still have the three holes. Um, this fourth hole right here that is if it's sitting on top of your mug it allows some venting and breathing so your mug doesn't seal uh, the airflow. But on this one our little lifter that is just stamped into the bottom so instead of spot welding a uh, little bit of metal into there they just stamped it from the bottom up it works it's a great way to save some money in manufacturing um, this Kalita wave geometry it also comes in a ceramic um, we still see that same little three holes with the lift um, Kalita is a Japanese company. All their stuff is made in Japan. Um, they do nice work. Uh, I like it. There's another Kalita, um, the same 185, that is a glass version. But this one is a knockoff. And I don't like it. It's covered in dust. I never use it. Um, this one is the same brand, did another knockoff. This one I just took out of the box, and um, I think I need to stop collecting all the crazy weird coffee stuff. But this one is really, it, it's just, um, the, the construction is simultaneously too heavy and too light and cheap at the same time. It's heavy in places where it shouldn't be, and it feels light and awkward in places where it ought not. Um, the bottom here, they stamped the, the little lift. Um, that was stamped, but if you notice, there are no holes drilled in there. Um, what they did was, when they stamped it, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little slit at the end of each of those stamps. Um, it, it works, right? It was a, it was a way to do it. Um, the question people are asking about uh, heat retention. So, generally, for the um, one of the features that, that's touted, with the Kalita Wave style brewers. They call it the Wave because of the filter that it uses. It has this rippled and waved filter. Um, when you put that in there, um, one of the things that I had heard years ago was that this wave pattern is supposed to trap air and give us some insulation. Um, the steel uh, conducts heat reasonably well. Um, so it's not going to steal a lot of heat from you. Um, from your brew, but it also won't keep it warm specifically. Ceramic, uh, ceramic 
this is the kind of thing that if you use it cold, like if I used it right now where it's like 50 degrees in here, this is going to be way too cold. I have to preheat this. I have to add some heat to my ceramic before I brew with it. And if I add the heat, this is a great insulator and it will help to retain some stability of heat. Um, so my thoughts on uh, heat retention, if you're using a more conductive um, material, uh, glass, steel, or plastic, you don't need to preheat as much because the vessel itself won't be taking heat out. If you're using ceramic, um, I have some real nice kind of pottery pieces, right? These all, this is a kind of pottery piece, same geometry generally as the, the Cleta Wave. I use the wave filters in here. All of these thick ceramic devices, I would want to give a good preheat um, just to ensure that we're not losing heat in the brew. Um, but let's get to brewing. With the Kalita Wave, um, I should add this uh, this newer Kalita Wave, um, this one's been powder coated um, so they don't come in colors. This was just a, um, this was a prize at a competition. Somebody had ripped it apart and powder coated it and they said they would never do it again because it was such a big headache to get it prepared. So anyway, <clears throat> my favorite thing about the Kalita Wave is the filters. The paper itself imparts minimal flavor. I might even venture to say no flavor at all. Um, if you rinse your filter and then taste that water, you can see how much flavor you washed out. The Kalita filters are amazingly clean. Uh, you don't need to rinse it. So if you're using the, the, the steel one, set it like that, bam, and go with it. However, remember our good friends, the knockoff twins? I fear that I fell victim to a uh, Kalita knockoff filter because although this looks the part, it's the 185 size, it has the Kalita tartan kind of plaid pattern on there. Um, it does say made in Japan. These paper filters taste gross if you don't rinse them. So that's what you get sometimes when you just buy the best value on Amazon. Um, I should have gone to an authorized uh, Kalita reseller to get my filters. Um, but it was pandemic. I wasn't going anywhere. Coffee shops, I don't know who's open, who's closed, um, that would be selling these. So I, I, I rolled the dice, went through Amazon. And I think I got duped. And I've, I hate knockoff stuff. And I hate especially ones that are trying so hard to look exactly like the real deal. Um, anyway, you know, I only ended up with 150 of those, so no big deal. What I want to do here, because these papers taste, I'm going to give them a rinse. The wave filter itself doesn't hold particularly well to being rinsed. It will often collapse down around the edges. Um, but it's better than it tasting of paper. So, so we have our rinse water. Um, I could taste that and see how, water, how paper it is, but I don't want to. I'm just going to pour that out. All right, so we have a flat bottom mug top pour over brewer. Still gonna pull out my 19 grams of coffee. And this is all within the same range, grind size, as uh, what I use for the Bee House, what I use for um, the V60. Um, it's what I use for my AeroPress. Just a kind of medium of the road, moderately, um, you know, not too fine, not too coarse, right? Um, let's put that in there. And then the technique, I'm going to slide this a little bit closer. The technique is just like we do with any of our other pour over brewers. Let me angle you down a little bit, just a little bit more. There we go. A top down shot. Um, technique is the same. We'll start our timer. And then just in the middle, the goal is to get all the grounds wet. If 19 grams of coffee went in, I'm gonna brew about twice that and do 38 to 40 grams 
water. Now here, this is a fun technique you see sometimes. You have a little swirl. That can help break up any dry spots. Um, the swirl, I say, yeah, if you like it, do it. If you don't, don't. So we're about 30 seconds in. I know that all my grounds have become saturated. So I'm just gonna start adding my water and just slowly add. Start at the inside, circling outward. The idea here is just to break up the dark clumps. Try to make sure everything's all incorporated. With all the pour over brews, I like to adopt a low high water line philosophy. Don't add the water faster than it can drain out. Um, just add a little bit, let it go down, add a little bit, let it go down. I was listening to a really cool podcast the other day um, about some chefs and they were talking about recipes and cookbooks and the, the host of the show, <clears throat> he was like, one of my favorite fish cookbooks was how to cook this one on a halibut or something. Said, uh, <clears throat> the chef says, get some halibut, cook it every day for a week. And that's how you learn to cook. Um, what, what they were ranting about was just kind of this idea that you really learn things by doing it. Um, and my point here is that if you look at a lot of recipes, recipes that, that we put out too, um, you know, it'll say something like, add 40 grams of water, let it sit for 30 seconds. Add 78 grams, let it sit for 45 seconds. At this time, add this specific amount of grammage. Um, the basic idea is just slowly add water. Know what your total water volume is going to be. Um, and just try to do it in a way that's quasi-repeatable. Um, Joshua is saying, is the flat bottom creating a slurry bed that's thinner and flatter than... Um, yeah, so uh, his question is about extraction. Um, one of the benefits of flat bottom is that it does allow for a more uniform brew because more, a higher average of the particles of coffee are sitting lower and at the same level uh, and they're spread out, the water passes through them the same. Um, if you have a big column of, of coffee, the grounds at the very bottom of that column are going to get a lot more water passing through them than the top. And if that column is, uh, you know, um, not a, not a cone, but uh, yeah, if it's a, I guess a, if it's a cone, then you get all that stuff at the very bottom of that V is exposed to a awful lot of water as contrasted with the stuff at the top. So, um, academically, Mathematically, those geometries are inferior, maybe. But all I really know is that I've made some glorious cups of coffee on a Chemex. I've made some glorious cups of coffee on the Bee House. And I've been served amazing V60s. I've hit 300 grams of water and let this drip through. And then I'm going to enjoy my coffee. This flat bottom um, geometry, this is what we see in almost all commercial brewers. This, I can't think of any that are cones, so I will say this is the standard shape for commercial brewers, um, restaurants, high volume cafes, places that use large batch. This is also one of the most common sizes and shapes for your auto drippers, your, you know, your uh, Bonavita brewers at home. So there we have it. We're just gonna let this drip through. Sometimes I get impatient and I'll just take this off. Like that. Now the brew on this was about four minutes. A little bit longer than normal. Um, sometimes when I chit chat, I don't brew as well. But let's see how we did. That'll do. That's a, that's a good cup of coffee right here. So, 
baddorfcoffee.com. We do not retail the Kalita Wave or the Wave filters. We do have the part that goes inside the filters. So if you need some more of that, we have a lot of that. Um, I'm specifically, I put on the inside of this, I put the Columbia Las Brisas, our decaffeinated Peru, Swiss water decaf, I highly recommend um, any time of the day. Um, Got to show that off a little bit. This is a perfectly flat bed. That's something that um, is considered desirable that we talked about the, the evenness of extraction. When that bed lays flat, that lets you know that all the water passed through, exposing a higher majority of particles to the most similar amounts of water. And all coffee brewing is, is exposing ground particles of coffee to water. And as long as water's touching, flavors are pulling out. Got to get a certain threshold, but you don't want to go too far. If you go too far, it starts to taste like penicillin, rubbing alcohol, burnt matches. Mm. It's a clean wave. Avoid knockoffs. Um, I'm not sure what the going price on a wave is. You might be able to save, I don't know, seven to twelve dollars by buying um, one of the knockoff brands. Um, I'm not going to say their name, but if you can read backwards in the glass, it happens to be right there. Put up a few extra bucks to get the good stuff because those are the people that are putting in the effort to give us the products that we that we need. Um, you also just get a better thing like this. I don't know. I hang on to this because I was going to use this as a camping brewer because if I lose it, whatever. But um, then I realized I have a lot of AeroPress brewers, so um, keep that one in my car. There we are. Thanks again for joining me. I'll be back on Friday. We're going to do this again. I'm um, going to chit chat about something. I'll try to do something more fun than, um, yeah, there we go. We do have our Mexico, uh, coffee out of Mexico available. Um, it's coming up real soon, back into holiday blend, which is always a nice surprise to see what we're getting. Cheers. There's a button right there. I got to push that button.